Okay, hello everyone. Lou Anne Marine here from Answering the Call of Your Purpose. And I'm very excited to be interviewing another inspirational guest. Just for those who have are probably new to this channel, this has been a creation of mine because I'm really excited about purpose and I wanted to bring some people who are living their purpose and give you some tips and you know some tools that can inspire you to do the same. So let's jump in. I've got the beautiful Michelle Scott from Our Wellness Community. Yay. Yay. And Michelle Scott is the founder of Our Wellness Community. She's also a meditation teacher, mindset coach and an amazing numerologist. So she creates relationships with their clients to help them figure out the answers to the same question she asked herself mm. as a teenager and I love this Michelle it's like who am I what is my purpose and why am I here so I'm just going to jump straight in and I want to ask you what are you doing right now mm, thank you thank you so much for uh, for having me on Lou you know both you and I we love a chat we love a chat we love a chat especially about that. all of this sort of stuff we're so passionate about it and uh, you know we've uh, we've been on the path for such a long time mm. so where am I at now I had to I love I love being interviewed because then you then you have uh, you have to think about it you yeah, have you to reflect that. on where you've been and how you you did what you did and um so for me where I'm at now is as you said the founder of our wellness community um but uh, and and also uh, lots of tools though the big tools in my kit as you said numerology but also now positive psychology and well-being because I spent 2020 um I, I started my diploma and I just have some assessments to complete and then I've got a diploma mm -hmm. in positive psychology and well-being which you know I'm absolutely stoked about mm -hmm. um and, and as you said, yeah, holistic uh, counselling tools in there as well. So that's kind of where I'm at uh, now, um, you know, with, um, with the work stuff. And then like personally, Lou, I'm coming into uh, turning 56 years old. So I'm actually, and I had a, I had a fabulous, um, I've had a couple of um, sort of oracle cards pulled for me here and there. And then I had a reading with a couple of people and, uh, and it was put to me like this. And I just went, oh, bingo, that's exactly what it is. I'm on the bridge. Oh, I'm wow. actually on the bridge. Yes. And that's how I've been feeling. So where I'm at, you know, personally and, and sort of spiritually is, is, yeah, I'm on the bridge. I knew I was leaving something behind, knew I was growing again into yeah. something more I didn't know what that was I've never ever done I've only ever been uh, guided I've only ever been guided to where I'm going um or, or, or rather I don't know where I'm going but I've always been guided when it's time to leave and I always trust that whatever's coming is is just going to show itself and it always does so yeah on the bridge I love that Michelle and you and you also have your own radio show and that's right yeah, exactly so and, and that's yes. the thing, you know, you, you get your answer to these questions. Like, oh, wow, that's really, I really did that. And I'm doing that and, and all that. And yes. so I, and you, you're a great interviewer as well. You have, you know, you, you interview so many amazing people. And, and I think that's yeah. where, you know, it's a great platform that, that we're bringing out there. But Definitely. what led you to where you are today? Mm. Right. This, this whole, and, you know, yes. I, I know you said you're very purpose orientated as well. And did you say you're, how old did you say you were? I'm going to be 56 in a couple of weeks. No way. I see. Oh, my God. That is amazing. Just it is the, amazing. Beautiful. beautiful. It is, yeah. yeah. And the bridge. So so what led you to where you are today? On, on yeah. The... Well, exactly what you said. And again, that sort of came about after, uh, you know, uh, there's been so much that's gone into, uh, into, into this uh, journey of becoming, you know, becoming... Um, uh, who I am today, who we are today is, is, is just filled with so many steps, you know. Uh, and for me, honestly, that's exactly how it began. Although, although you know, I'll, I'll always sidestep to what numerology, Lou, as you do yep. with, uh, with the head. head analysis. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to throw that in there that uh, when I found numerology in my late 30s, I discovered I was life path nine. Mm -hmm. And what was just so uh, thrilling about that was it answered uh, the reason why as a child, I was always, the number nine is the way of the humanitarian. The number nine leads by example. The number nine is very much about uh, ethical and ethics and integrity. And, um, uh, you know, why can't we all just get along? Why can't yeah. we all just share? Why can't we all just give what we have uh, to those who do not? 
So uh, when I found that out that found that out about myself, I was like, oh my God, that's why I was like that. That's why actually I was drawn to John Lennon. Remember mm -hmm. uh, his solo album and he and he had that song, Imagine. imagine if yeah. all the world, uh, if all the world uh, was at peace, imagine. And and that song, my God, I used to play that song over and over and mm -hmm. over. Oh, again. again. Yeah. I just, I didn't know why I loved it. And I'm sure I didn't really understand all of what I was singing about. Mm. But I loved that song. I loved the message in that song. And so as, as part of that, Lou, I spent a lot of time unbeknownst to uh, everybody that knows me now mm. or that's met me in, since I came back from three years overseas prior to that. I actually was um, quite shy. As a child, I was very shy, very sensitive didn't really say boo to anybody um only ever had a couple of friends so spent a lot of time on my own which i again found in hindsight was the very best thing that i could ever have done for the character building that it took to be to become who i am so i always say with parents and even when my son was a teenager and he'd go through his moments as hard as that can be as a as a parent because you just want them to be happy all the time I understood that if he's down and miserable and not happy, he needs to be. Mm. We all need to have that time where things are not working out for us, when our hearts get broken or we don't know the way forward. And we need to be left alone to figure it out because that's how we, you and I and our generation, that's how we built the skills we have, right? Because we were left alone maybe sometimes left alone too, too much, alone too much. <laughs> but, you know, we got yeah. to figure shit there out. There was a reason, yeah. Yeah, and, and exactly what was right about that. What was right about my upbringing was that, uh, and I was bullied and I had all the same things that we've all uh, gone through, but I spent a lot of time in my room and I used to constantly be thinking about that, Lou. Who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And that, I didn't know what the hell, I didn't know what the, the, the answers to that were going to be. But what happened was it took me on a journey. It was a curiosity that led me off uh, in the direction of going overseas. It uh, attracted all these people, uh, books, mentors. One thing led to the other thing. And uh, and that's how, that's how it started. Wow. That's and how I got started on the journey of self-discovery and, and figuring out the answers to those questions took me to, uh, yeah, places I I wouldn't have dreamt existed or were possible. And, um, and yeah, that's how the road to, uh, to, to where I am now uh, started. I love that, Rochelle. You know, as I've been interviewing different guests and everyone's comes up with a there's a certain word that comes up and uh before somebody said it was courage that led her but you just said curiosity, curiosity. you did you did and i and i've always yes. i felt that about you too it's like oh you know let, let's unpack something let's ask better questions yes uh, and things. lou you know what my biggest surprise i tell you everything about time uh, and i'm going to say it's divinely inspired i'm going to say yeah. that I learned very, very early on, it was the journey of self-development, but honestly, it began as a spiritual quest. Yeah. And I'm really glad that whether it, it exists or not, because I wouldn't bloody know whether <laughs> whether we reincarnate or not, or whether there's a soul or not, I wouldn't have the first freaking clue about it. But I'll tell you my belief that it did, that it is, that it exists, yeah. changed everything. And, and I feel like ever since then, my life has been divinely inspired. I've had all the same letdowns and disappointments and real tra tragedies like everybody else. But I feel like I always get, uh, I, I do have the, I'm going to talk about positive psychology because in positive psychology, my strengths are exactly what I thought I had, um, are exactly what, uh, you know, have always held me in good stead, mm -hmm. which is curiosity, which is bounce back resilience yeah. um so so yeah curious and in curiosity Lou, lots of studies in positive psychology around curiosity so it was my biggest surprise to to discover that that particular thing alone they have found that people that have curiosity will always bounce back they'll always be inspired they'll always be hope they'll always want to learn new tools so it's not that yeah and, and that's what it is for me and you know but I was an observer though again in numerology my um 
heart's desire is an eight, but my minor heart's desire is the number seven, which is the, the journey of the high priestess and, and, and that inner stuff, you know, that building that inner world. And um, yeah, so um, oh, I just forgot my train of thought there. No, it's good. it was the curiosity. And I think well, even, you know, oh, in what's yes. happening to yeah. today, it's like, well, just ask different questions or ask better questions. Ask, the question. question. ask better yeah. questions yeah. and just be yeah. curious, you know. Yeah. And honestly, you know what, Lou, I met, I had a friend uh, from school that uh, we didn't see each other for some time. Then I met up with her again. We ended up studying again. And actually, she was in the role of teacher at the time that I was studying. And so therefore she was, we had to do what little assessments. Um, and so she was marking my essays and assignments. And this sort of, you could take this as an insult, but I took it as a compliment when she said, oh, I didn't know you were this clever at school. I didn't think you were this clever at school. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I didn't even realize, I later I thought, oh, was that an insult? But then I thought, no, actually, you know what? She's right. I wasn't that clever at school. I hated school. So therefore mm -hmm. I didn't put any effort and energy into it. Mm. When I went on this path, which uh, is all those things I was passionate about, the answers to those questions, and then everything I found along the way that just thrilled me to bits, and I was just yeah. constantly, well, of course, now we know that the brain uh, has, neuro, it has neuro, neuroplasticity, which yeah. means the brain changes. So what actually happened was I became really keen about learning everything that I was really um, so curious and passionate about. And I changed, mm. and my brain, my neural pathways have changed. My brain functions and connections have changed. And I actually am quite clever now, but I, I honestly wouldn't have been considered clever at school. So curiosity <laughs> leads to so many wonderful things. It does. And, and going back to that, that school thing, it's like, this is what kids should be doing. This is what we should be doing at yes, our school, not just forcing yes. them into things that they, you know, they, they, not they, interested they, in. I'm not interested in. And there's yeah. certain schools that do allow that, but it's it's not yes. mainstream, right? So love that. So then um, how, so what do you believe is your purpose, Michelle? That's a big question. But yeah, it is a big question. And, you know, I might have had a different answer, you know, a day ago or a week ago or, or a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, because I think purpose is yeah. lifelong. So, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, so this moment, what do you feel it is? Exactly, yeah. right. And so, actually, my one liner to that uh, would be that really my, my purpose and, and me going in search of the answers to those questions, I've always, my purpose is to live a meaningful life. Oh, yeah. right it's to live a meaningful life I've always been passionate and that's what that's where the questions came came out of it it, it came out of this um me not understanding how it could be only and I, and I don't and I don't mean this as a slight but I I just couldn't get my head around as a teenager that I grew up and I met the man of my, the, the I met the the guy of my dreams we got married had children that was it I just, I couldn't yeah. fathom that. And, and that's not to say that if you have that, that's awesome and probably part of your journey. Yeah. But for me, it was never, um, I just, yeah, and I've always been, and that's what, um, so it was that thinking, I'm sure I'm here to do more. It was the life path nine. I was always passionate about helping others. I always just, and I just did it. I was born, I was the eldest. So I was automatically in the role of helper the minute my, my brother was born um I was two years old I was already the mm. mother the helper the leader I was already um looking out for and looking after and and that's been when it's something that you've come to do it finds you you, yeah. you can't get away from that shit <laughs> And and so, isn't it that yeah. the, the roomy the roomy phrase you know what you are seeking is also seeking you yes like, you know yes yeah. yes and so but Lou it was it, it, it's living a meaningful life and I've got many ways that I do that many ways that I do that but really that is what it's about um so you know I always think that and it's not just about my work you know it's living a meaningful life as um um, as as a as a parent, as a partner, as a daughter, as a friend, um, and then you know, as as someone who, uh, yeah, who, um, and in the reading, actually, in the reading, um, he was a medium, and he said, "Look, mum came through," and he okay. said, "Oh, your mum, you know, your mum's come through, and she's uh, she," and he was just sort of chatting about her. He goes, "Oh, she's really she's really cheeky, isn't she?" And I said, "Yeah, she is." <laughs> mum always had a 
really cheeky sort of sense of humor like you like you well like it's you. funny because i i actually see myself i could be really funny right but <laughs> i feel like accidentally <laughs> i feel like i'm accidentally funny like my nieces think i'm such a hoot and yet i'll just be talking and they yeah. just think everything about the way i do that is hilarious <laughs> but i actually i actually describe myself and see myself as a little bit more serious whereas Mum was really fun and funny. Mum mm. didn't have to work hard to be silly, mm. right? Whereas I think I'm a bit more serious. I'm a bit more, and Kim, will, you know, my partner, Kim will probably tell you that he's like, no, oh, he's like, he's the lighthearted one. But mum's come through all sort of, um, you know, um, having a bit of fun with, uh, with Cameron. And, uh, but all she says is, he goes, oh, how funny is your mum? She comes through all sort of cute. She could have said anything. But, but what she did say instead was why. Your mum's asking you why. Because so I've been a single parent, as I say, when you're, you know, the life path now, when you've come to care for others, you're doing that everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was always a single mother and, and then dad after mum died moved in with us. And he said, your mum's asking why. And, uh, and, and, my, and my response was instant, because I can. Oh, wow. Because I can. I mean, does it give me the shits? Of course it does. Do I want to always, I haven't, it, it's not always uh, rainbows and bloody unicorns, but why do I do it? Because I can. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what my meaning, so for me, a meaningful life is, I wouldn't be, and this is how I think you, the journey of, of self-understanding, it wouldn't be in my nature. I would get a short-term fix to a long-term problem if I shirked my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, I might have freedom for about five minutes, but I would be haunted for the rest of my life because it's not how I am made up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm always, I always go back to my meaningful life. Whenever I'm sort of not, uh, you know, what does this mean to me? What is, where's my why here? What am I really getting out of this? Uh, it's about relationships, connections, of course, in hand analysis, I'm the school of love. Yeah, yeah, be <laughs> yeah, be beautiful. Um, and so, you know, I, I also ask the question, like, when, when did you um, answer, you know, because I think purpose, our purpose, it shows up in different ways, right? And, and or there'll yes. be feelings and, and it's like, well, and I guess at that point, you go, yeah. well, shall I answer that? Or should I? so when, mm -hmm. you know, when did you or how did you answer the, the call of your purpose? Yeah, yeah. You know, I like know, it, and sometimes and people have the big breakdown to have the big breakthrough. Sometimes yes. you don't have to do that. Most of the time we do. But, you know, yes. what, what happened for you? Yes, that is so true. Like you, after interviewing so many women, that is exactly usually what happens. They get, mm. well, I think for me, um, it didn't really it didn't really come about through uh, a breakthrough, um, mm. a, a breakdown. It didn't break down, or, uh, uh, it didn't break down and break through. Basically, from the minute I sort of found uh, that first book I picked up, The Magic of Believing, the first book I picked up that led to the next book, I was just hooked. I was hooked on the spiritual journey. I was hooked into the self development journey. I didn't think that I would be, I didn't see myself as a healer, but I was already mm. by 25, I was already a leader. I had already gone from uh, Cole's checkout chick to I want more. I uh, went back to, uh, you know, business college, uh, junior clerk, computer operator, mm. PA, office manager, went overseas, <laughs> lots of temping. Um, and, then I, and then I actually went, which, of course, is my hidden passion number in numerology. It's a five, which means uh, uh, hidden passion five. They're very... They can fly by the seat of their pants. They're very versatile. They love change and challenge. They can, uh, you know, they're quick-witted. They, um, they can pick up everything and anything and pick it up quickly. And uh, so, again, I didn't, as I said, I never knew where I was going, but I always knew when it was time to leave. And usually that came when the challenge had gone out of, when I couldn't learn anymore yeah. where I was, then yeah. I, just, I just went, oh, well, what, well, what next, right? And, and it would always come. And uh, I was overseas, I was doing word processing, traveling, having a great time, learning all sorts of other things about myself. And I wanted to leave that place because, uh, you know, there was nothing else in it for me. I wanted to get a bit more serious by then. Um, I was planning on staying in the UK. And my boss said, how about we train you? He liked me. There was a big story around that. Um, <laughs> but, but um, and I, he said, oh, I said, don't have any work really here, John. 
And he said, Nana, how about we train you as a CAD draftswoman? So then I went to CAD drafting and that's where I started to learn. That's how I started to, I'd already taught myself how to, how to use the computer though, Lou, when I was about 18, 19, yeah. when they first came out, right? Yeah. Um, and I learned in DOS language. So that's when, so everything about where you end up, Lou, you're picking up all of the skills throughout the whole journey. So that's how I started to pick up all of these uh, technical skills, all of these, uh, this ability to be able to, because I, I believe, because I taught myself from a manual how to use the computer in that first PA job I had, I believe that that's what um, started the uh, belief or, or the competence or the confidence that mm. I could learn anything. Just give me a manual, right? Yeah. That, that's what happened. Yeah, right. And so okay. I went from, from that to, I came back, I did, did, did more CAD drafting, but then I went to telemarketing, sales, customer service, Telstra, team leader. So I was actually picking up all of the skills that it took to do what I'm doing now, the founder of a wellness community, running events, facilitating uh, all of these people and tasks and, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and then, Lou, I, um, what happened? Oh, I was in a relationship that broke up. I'd, I'd been learning spiritually just for my own development. And then what happened? I broke up with the fellow. Um, so maybe it was a bit of a, a, a breakthrough. I don't know. But my friend was studying at Visionary. And, uh, and then I was like, oh, is there a, a college for that sort of stuff? Yeah, And then that's what happened. I, she said, yeah. And I'd actually already met Mel a couple of years before then. Anyway, I'd done meditation class with Mel. So again, whatever is meant to be for you, honestly, it's, it's, it's in your way. It, it appears when you're ready. You don't have to, you don't have to stress and struggle. And so okay. I started studying and she invited me to teach. And, and that was it, basically. I've had some, but I've been on it and off it because of, because, because life. But once I found that I could, take all of my skills and do what I've always wanted to do, which was to help people, whether I'm teaching it, speaking it, coaching it, every day in, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I've done it in the corporate world. I've done it as, a, as the eldest in the family. I've done it as a daughter mm. um, after losing mum. And, and I also do it as a healer. Yeah, and I love that, Michelle, because, you know, it's kind of, you just follow the breadcrumbs. It's like, I just oh, follow the breadcrumbs. Because, you know, Lou, I left out this bit. I was, I was 28 ish. Oh, it was, it was BC before child. And, um, <laughs> I love that, BC. And I had never done this before. And my friend rang up and she said, oh, her mother in law had a, had a promotions business. Um, and she said, oh, Lois, um, Lois needs a hand. Do you want to come meet me at, uh, let's say, Fountain Gate? And, um, and I said, what do I do? She goes, oh, I don't know. Let's just go. And so I go. Now, Lois was, uh, you know, an amazing switched on effervescent uh, businesswoman. Uh, when her five boys, when she raised her four boys, she then uh, came into her own like you and I. And she, uh, her husband built the kitchens and uh, she got all of the contracts and we went to shopping centers the kitchen would be there you'd cook you get all the food from the retailers and you'd spruik and um but the first day I go there and she's like I go I'm not a chef she goes oh you don't have to be a chef from five boys you see and this is the thing about what you've come to do you are earning skills in ev every single yeah. day yeah. so she'd been a she'd been a housewife and a mother for for four boys but what she'd learned was she had to cook a lot out of a little because they were always bringing all their friends over. Yes, and so by the, time, it, yes, yeah. and by the time she, she created this kit, the spruiking promotions business and she did lots of different things. It was all the skills that she picked up over the course of her life as a housewife and a mother and a wife. Um, and she goes, don't worry, don't have to be a chef. She goes, here's the recipe. It was a bit of this, a bit of that. And you added some sauce. And so then it was fun. We were just cooking. And I said, I'm not going on that spruiking thing, though. I'm not, I'm not doing that. And she goes, no, you don't have to do that. Don't worry. But see, Lois, again, you meet these beautiful masters, right, when you're ready. And so about halfway through the day, we're having fun. And she goes, I just turned around. And she went like this and threw the microphone in my face. And I was like, no, no, I'm not doing it. She goes, oh, don't be stupid. No one can hear you. It's on bloody zero. <laughs> what, what do I say? What do I say? Just anything. No one's listening. Just do it. And so I just did it. 
And then the next thing you know, I spent 13 years on and off working for her, cooking, spruiking. Um, and so no surprise, I'm on the radio because I started, the microphone was in my face at late 20s. So everything about where you end up is meant to be. And by the time you get there, you will have earned all of the bits and pieces. So you don't have to worry. No, and I, I, I'm very similar to you, all the different jobs and the temping is a big thing too, because you've got to change yes. where you're yes. going to. And one thing I did was that got me good with probably the rejection side, right? I was in real yes. estate and my job was to ring a hundred people every single day to ask them who wants to sell their house. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, and that was just like, oh, you could say yes or no, or and it's like, don't take it personally. And most of the time, the last call of the day would be like, yes, I do want to sell my house. Come and see me. I'm like, oh, I had to go through 99 to get one. <laughs> But again, it's such that would have exactly that's why you are so great at that in your spiritual business. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, but bringing all these skills on. Yes. So I want to ask you the next thing. So you've answered the call. Why Mm. do you think it's so important, Michelle, to you know to do your purpose work? Oh, so important. And uh, I always say, I've 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 always said this that uh, because we, as you say, growing up, we really don't learn what we need to learn. We really don't, uh, we just don't help uh, help ourselves out as human beings at all in that, in that early stage, right? And we end up, those of us that are different, and we're actually all different. We all complain about the same thing that, that yeah. uh, oh, I always felt different. Um, so I say, yes, the different, the different that you are is the difference you've come to make mm. in the world, right? That's why mm. we should all be embracing it. So your purpose, it's so important because only you can do it, right? Mm. If you're yeah. not stepping up to do what you've come to do, and we have all come to do something. I may not be, you know, I'm, I may not be here to be Oprah, but I can certainly be the Oprah that I'm supposed to be in my neck of the woods, right, in my community. So we've all come to do what we've come to do. And if, and if I don't step up to do it, or you don't step up to do it, then that thing doesn't get done. And I already know, like I was chatting to my son, we were, we were talking about uh, where he's at and trying to, trying to sort of talk to him and let him know where I had sort of been at that was similar to where he's at. And I had someone say to me a couple of years ago, uh, because I've been passionate about this for a long, for the longest time, mm. and people who know me really well know that about me. And, and it's had, you know, ups and downs, and I've been on it and off it. And she said, um, oh, when are you going to start making money out of that? Like in a really, uh, wow. with, with quite a bit of contempt. Yeah. Uh, oh, when are you going to start actually making money? And it was interesting. I'm I'm really good because I don't uh, I don't pick up on insults immediately. Which yeah. is, I like that. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to hang on. Yeah. 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 I don't, I, it's so good, right? What's really good about totally. that is that I just end totally. up talking normally, and then later I go, oh, I think that was a bit of an insult. But my yeah. reply to her was, um, oh, you know, that's coming. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, what I do and my purpose is important. What I do, I have, I've had people, and I bet she's never had this, but I've had people, um, I have read for so many people, taught so many people, I have helped so many women, I've connected so many women. I have women running up to me, I've had, had, I've had them in shopping centres, I had one at the gym, and I don't even remember them because I've spoken at so many events and, and, and been in so many different uh, places, and, and I don't remember them, which I always feel a bit bad about. Um, running up to me saying, Michelle, you did a reading for me. Michelle, I was in your class and you changed my life. Yes. And I'm like, and and I just actually started babbling like that because I didn't realise she was actually insulting me. I was like, you know, look, that's coming. That may not have, that may not have been, uh, I've always earned, uh, I've always earned earned what I needed to. Mm -hmm. I've always Mm -hmm. survived. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, and I just started babbling on about that, how wonderful it was that every time I hit a little lull, in the in the business, every time I kind of went, oh, you know, is it fucking worth it? <laughs> I can swear it's not on radio. You so. totally can um, swear do whatever you want. And then you, and that's what would happen, Lou. The universe in the and I'm not joking. 
instantly within bloody 24 hours, someone will call me, someone will message me, someone will say, you changed my life. So if you're not, and we all have that, if you're not stepping up to your purpose, whatever it is that you've been in training for your whole oh, life, yes. <laughs> it, it, it won't get done. And then and then someone is left wanting. If I hadn't done what I, if, if money was the driver and if I had, had listened to lots of people along the way that kind of went, what are you oh, doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those people whose lives I changed wouldn't have been changed. Yeah, and and you know, like, even, like you're so passionate. Like I can just feel that. Like, I am. Watching I the, really am. You know, to doing the importance is to be in that passion, and and that must give you so much joy oh. and happiness. And who you've you know you're yeah. out right. Yes. So yeah. Yes. So knowing your purpose is one thing right and I love the quote to know and not to do is not yet to know um but but embodying and expressing mm. your purpose you know is, is what we're here to do so what do you think what's one of your tools I know numerology is definitely a huge one of yours but yes what what something well just still can be numerology but what is one of your favorite tools that you use that you could probably share with the audience as well that has helped you express your purpose you know because mm. like i bring up the example well i've done a lot of shadow work and i've done yeah. um, work and i've done i'll hand you know what what's what just springs to mind the one thing just one thing not the one thing oh for me yeah tool. exactly I know you've got so, so many, many so many tools but for me yeah. If you haven't, if you know, to know thyself and to thine yeah, own self yeah. be true. Because oh. if you don't know who you are, you are constantly going to be answering the call um, yeah. of somebody else's yeah. desire and somebody yeah. else's dreams, right? So that's that's my uh, becoming my own best friend and taking that journey of self-understanding and constantly, constantly uh, coming back to self. That's what makes everything else. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm always saying, if you're not strong at the core of your own life, nothing else is possible. Oh, that is so yeah. true. You know, uh, what a possible. great reminder. Thank you for reminder to know thyself. And it, it is. So yeah. then I love to bring, um, and, and you've got probably so many people you can choose from, but who is a favourite person that you've worked with in the past or currently and, you know, that you've helped and then why? Why? What's What happened? What was the story that happened? Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, I know, the word favourite, it's not favourite, but, you know, it's just somebody that swings to mind. It's like, God, she had that biggest breakthrough because of this or... Mm. That's an interesting question. Um, I guess I would talk about the collaborators here. Maybe I wouldn't talk oh, about yeah. uh, reading and teaching. Maybe I would talk about uh, our collaborators. So, you know, and I felt like that was a really unique thing when we started that a couple of years ago. Mm. That, uh, you know, and again, going back to John Lennon and Imagine and, uh, you know, everyone all together. So that word team, it means together, everyone achieves more. And I truly believe that at the core so the community the wellness community was about you know what if it's just me honestly even I find that fucking boring <laughs> you know what I mean and so I was kind you're of you're like, a nine a humanitarian yeah. you need people I was like you. you know what yeah. we need yeah because because if you get back to we're all different and we've all come to do different things so I wanted a community where it didn't it, everybody that came to the community would find someone in the community yeah yeah, that could, uh, that could help them. So I guess I would talk about that, that I feel like I haven't seen it happening anywhere else in the way that, uh, that we uh, mm. do it, that, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I basically uh, built a community where there was so much collaboration and the feedback that I get all the time from the collaborators is that, uh, you know, it's with ease and joy uh, and glory um, there's no, there's no competitiveness. There's no, um, there's no difficulty. It, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's ease. It's um, a connectedness. It's, uh, and everybody has grown, whether they've grown yeah. there. And, and also, you know, what's also happened, um, a couple of things that I didn't even, that that weren't even the intention. I just wanted to bring everyone together. I actually just wanted to give the audience and the members lots of choice. That's what that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to share the gifts because mm. I knew, and actually the idea came from Oprah because I used to listen to Oprah's Super Soul Sundays. Mm -hmm. And every time she had these guests on, I would be so inspired by every different one. And I thought, you know what, we're not Oprah, but I, 
I know tons of women. And I wanted to showcase all those women that we've got women at our ground level that are like Oprah's guests, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted uh, our audience to listen to you and, and Sandra and Margie and Karina and go, oh, yes, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, I didn't uh, know mm -hmm. that. And so the feedback that I've had has been amazing. And along that line that uh, uh, they have all stepped out of their um, alone. They felt alone and on their own. They've come into the group. They've started a, a bunch of them have started groups they didn't have before. They are speaking on platforms that they didn't uh, um, speak on before. I've also done quite a bit of mentoring uh, with, with uh, a, a lot of them. And what I am able to do too really quickly because of my experience is I can see, uh, and even as a team leader, I was good at this. I was good at seeing where you're at mm. and where you want to go. And I was good at laying out that path for you. So, uh, yeah, they've all grown, but, but forget the, the, the money side and the business side. What's been really gratifying is how they've grown in all of those character mm. skills of courage and, and being inspired. And they all speak about getting, um, you know, confidence from the group. Yeah. It's easier when you're not on your own. It is, and, and, and you know, and I do, and I've seen that, you know, because I'm part of that group, yeah. but, you know, sometimes I haven't always been in it, but I can see it's like, oh, my yes. God, she's there, she's doing a Zoom live, and yeah. or, but you yeah. do, you've created this platform for people to step up, and, yeah, they are like Oprah gets, like, it doesn't matter, yes. it doesn't have to be a certain up here but yeah it's like we've yeah. all got a good story to share and we've all got a gift to give and and yeah yes. thanks for bringing that to the world so yes. then michelle where can we where can we and i know you've got a special gift for us and also where can yes. we find you and i'm going to put the link down below but could you wonderful. just explain that for me and then i've yes, got wonderful one last yeah. question so yeah, you'll hmm. get the freebie and uh so you can find me i spent just uh, spend most of my time uh, in our wellness community mm. uh on uh, facey if you go to at uh, owc vip group um search for for that uh, or our wellness community our website is our wellness community.com dot au and i'm also in uh, as a as a media not numerology uh, person um, at Michelle Scott on air and even on the website you'll find if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one, you just click one-on-one uh, -on -one with Michelle Scott and yes I'm going to have a lovely little freebie it'll be okay. all about uh, uh, because as you say I'm in numerology what I love about it Lou like hands it gives me in instant ac access into who you are why you are here and what is your purpose I mean mm -hmm. I can just get uh, strengths and shortcomings karma past my fear um, so much info about uh, a, about an individual and, and from their kind of set, uh, their plan and their, mm. uh, you know, their, their development journey. So um, numerology, uh, speak, we will do, uh, the freebie will be 2020 personal year numbers, but also Lee, what I've done with numerology is I've built my own platform. I've taken what uh, was already out there and when I decided to uh, really d dive deep into that topic, because I used to love everything, I used to have everything going on. Then I went, Michelle, you can't be an expert if you're constantly doing everything. So mm -hmm. I had to pick one. And when numerology became it, I actually created my own program. So the nine core numbers take you on a journey. Uh, the nine core numbers have an archetype. And so I'm going to introduce a little bit of, uh, of that in the freebie as well. Yay. And the, again, the link's going to be under. The under link is going to be because it's very long. Yeah. So just follow the breadcrumbs, <laughs> so we say. So follow the breadcrumbs. So, yes. Michelle, thank you so much for being with us here. Thank and you. I always want to end on kind of, I don't know, it doesn't have to be humorous or whatever. Yes. But I want, to, I want you to share, tell us something that nobody knows about. You may be Kim does or maybe your kids do yes. but or, you, or you know your son but it's like yes. what's something that nobody knows about you that you can share with us today <laughs> I did I did have to think about it because I'm actually an open book mm. I'm like, I don't think there's anything that I haven't actually <laughs> said <laughs> somehow in some way now the uh the the uh inspiring answer is going to be this right that not too many people know your audience certainly may not know that I actually won a brand new car and also manifest the man of my dreams, 
just by thinking about it. Although in the case of Kim, I did write about it as well, right? Right. Um, so oh that was, God. yeah, that was uh, that was pretty damn special. And again, just comes back to the magic of believing yes. and, and honesty when you are, oh. um, you know, really kind of uh, sitting in your power, owning your power, sitting in your power, really, you've got to have that trust. Mm -hmm. um, I just used to say it. I enjoyed the process of, uh, of all the competitions I entered to win it. And I bloody did. I took six months too. Wow. Great. Unbelievable that was. Unbelievable. Yeah. And Kim, Kim might have taken about a year, I think. I think it took about a year to, uh, for him to come to life. But with him, what I love about that story is I actually wrote it out. It was an A4 sheet of paper. And I had written it down uh, line for line, Lou, things like, uh, um, you know, I wanted him to be uh, in touch with nature because I hadn't uh, been out in it very much um, mm -hmm. he was born in the country he was uh, always owned properties he was a real country boy I wanted someone that was in touch with animals he was an, he's an animal whisperer like it was just wow really specific but on the funny side when I came into yeah. the zoom with you I said to you uh, you know with all, all of these technical uh, the technical stuff is so great but at the same time you and I because our work is uh, is all in it I'm on it all the time and then there's all these issues and I go Lou everybody probably doesn't know that I say motherfucker at least <laughs> once every 10 minutes <laughs> well we do now we do now and you know the, the I love that word you know it's just it's just an expression don't be offended by it it's <laughs> and then Lou, then I kind of thought this year I thought maybe you know I do believe words are important maybe I should change it to mother sucker yeah <laughs> I don't know, Michelle. I just love that. No, not the same, is it? <laughs> yeah, Oof. it is what it is. So, Michelle, <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us and go find it at ourwellnesscommunity.com.au and I'll put all the links below. It's been a pleasure. I'm sure you've inspired many watching this. So, thank you very much. Oh, and it was fun. Yeah, yeah. You can like, everyone, you can like, share, or comment below as well. And we'll see you next time. All right. So, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>